we're in high gear, this is coming. That, incidentally, is the Falcon 9 standing on the launch pad Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral back in January of this year. Uh, so a very quick background, SpaceX is up to about 750 people. Uh, I have to change that number every time I present these slides. Um, we were founded, what's that, seven years ago uh, with the express intention of flying people. Human space transportation was always the objective. To get there, we had to build a rocket capable of carrying people and make it work reliably, consistently, dependably. So the intention was always to expand into human transportation once the system is proven. We have uh, facilities in Hawthorne, that's near LAX, uh, Central Texas, we do all our own propulsion and structures testing near Waco, uh, Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral, the old Titan IV pad, and we launched the Falcon 1 and soon the Falcon 9 as well from Omelec Island and Kwajalein Atoll in the South Pacific. Um, just another indication that uh, this is real, we've managed to book 24 additional flights, 24 future flights. These are hard flights from paying customers, NASA included. Um, these are people who have awarded this to us competitively, who have come to our facility, seen what we're doing and how we're doing it, and been convinced enough to put their money on the table and their programs on the table uh, in the belief that we will execute for them. And uh, that's quite an impressive manifest. So the Falcon 1, just as background, this has nothing to do with cots or flying people, except in as much as this was a tremendous learning exercise for the Falcon 9. Uh, Falcon 1 reached orbit last year, um, became the first commercially developed liquid-fueled launch vehicle in history to launch off a launch pad and reach Earth orbit. That, I think, was a historic moment for space, for commercial space, for the future of space. Uh, next launch will be next month. Um, the vehicle has actually been ready since uh, April from Omelec. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the substantial lessons learned rolled forward from the Falcon 1 into the Falcon 9 and the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, one of the unique things about SpaceX in this industry is that we do almost everything ourselves. We build, we design and build and test the structures, the engines, the, almost all of the avionics, we buy GPS receivers and we buy IMUs, but apart from that we make almost everything. Uh, and the whole ground systems as well. This gives us uh, tremendous control over budget and schedule. Just some pictures of the uh, Flight 5 Falcon 1 in the hangar on, and on the pad in Omelec. You can see the, uh, the payload in the upper right is the Razixat spacecraft for the Malaysian government. Okay, so Falcon Falcon 9, the real deal. Uh, first launch will be, for the vehicle will be at the launch pad, last pieces of the vehicle will arrive in October, so November is the earliest launch uh, opportunity. The pad will be ready to receive it and do processing. It is, no matter how you look at it, about a fifth the cost of the nearest domestic competitors. Um, and critically, again, it was designed from inception to meet human rating requirements, or if it doesn't meet them now, to have them easily added later. So the, wherever there is a design decision that has to be made, if it can't be retrofitted, we design it for human rating. Uh, now, uh, it's the first vehicle uh, since the Saturn V to have uh, engine out capability so we can make mission with uh, losing one or even two engines uh, during the uh, first stage boost. And again, it's all fabricated in-house at SpaceX. That's a picture of it standing vertical on the pad at Cape Canaveral. Uh, and now a slew of pictures, just to give you some indication of the status of Falcon 9 development. The uh, left is an acceptance test of one of the first flight engines for the first stage um, Falcon 9. So that's a Merlin engine, first stage Merlin engine. Uh, that is completed qualification. Uh, the right-hand side is the vacuum engine, so it's almost the same as the first stage Merlin. It's just optimised for vacuum performance, so it's got a big nozzle on it, it's restartable, um, and if it's, it's throttleable, and other than that, it's pretty much an identical engine. That's just about through development testing. That's a picture of a full mission duty cycle, 360-second burn on that engine. Uh, it will be entering qual. If it hasn't already, it'll be entering qual in the next couple of weeks. Uh, one of the other big risks that NASA identified early on before they awarded the, the COTS program to us uh, three and a half years ago 
was concerns about getting nine engines on the first stage of the Falcon 9 to play together happily. This was one of the challenges of the Saturn V development, Saturn 1 and Saturn V developments. Um, and so we executed a series of multi-engine tests. We, we put a first stage of a Falcon 9 up on the big test stand in Texas. We added one engine and burned it. We added another engine and burned it. And we did three engines and then five engines and then nine engines. And we ran nine engines for 15 seconds a number of times. And then we went to a full mission duty cycle, 177 second burn of uh, nine engines. That was the largest impulse, propulsive impulse ever produced by a commercial private company. Uh, and it was pretty impressive. Uh, on the left, that's the aft end of a Falcon 9 in the factory, nine engines and the support truss and the skirt, composite skirt. We make all the composites in-house ourselves. Uh, and the production line for the Merlin engines. Um, this year, we will make more engines at SpaceX than any country on Earth, except possibly the Russians. And next year, we will definitely exceed the Russians. Some more pictures. The left-hand side is the qualification unit of the first stage of the Falcon 9 in the big test stand. Is there a pointer? Oh, here we go. I've got a mouse. Uh, we built this big tower to do specifically to do the qualification of that article. In the background is the big uh, nine-engine test stand. And then in the factory, we have, oops, we have first stage and second stage of the Falcon 9 flight articles being prepared for flight. Um, bottom middle is the engine controller on the qualification engine. That's a piece of avionics we built. Uh, top right is the lithium polymer batteries that we've qualified for the uh, launch vehicles. Um, we, again, designed and built and qualified them in-house. And the uh, skirt qualification unit for the Falcon 9. So there's a lot of flight hardware, a lot of qualification hardware lying around. I do encourage you, if you're in Los Angeles, to uh, call business development and we can organize tours. We do this all the time. It's actually one of the most effective ways to uh, make believers out of skeptics is to bring you in and show you what's really happening. Uh, Slick 40, so this is the old Titan IV launch pad at Cape Canaveral, right in between our, uh, our ULA cousins. Um, uh, Delta IV and Atlas V launch pads, right dead in the middle is Slick 40. Uh, we erected this vehicle in January of this year. That's a flight first stage, um, a prototype second stage. And uh, the transport erector and everything was all fabricated uh, in-house. So this is a quick bird image, recent quick bird image of Slick 40, commercial space, again, quick bird. Um, if you do a before and after comparison, you notice that uh, the major change that's visible from space is that the massive above, above ground structures are gone. There was a mobile service tower was the largest mobile structure in the world. Uh, we didn't need it. We didn't necessarily need it out destroyed, but uh, the cost of maintaining it on the Air Force Base every year was exorbitant, even in an unused state. So uh, it was uh, demolished, and the umbilical tower was demolished, all because we do horizontal integration of the vehicle, because it's just so much more cost effective uh, and possibly safer, too. Uh, the hangar in the bottom right is uh, completed. That's our integration hangar. You can see it in the bottom corner of the pad here. Uh, that's all been built in the last two months. Which brings us to Dragon. Uh, Dragon is the spacecraft we're building under COTS and flying under COTS and CRS to provide cargo services to the station. Um, it is also designed from inception to carry crew. So factors of safety, fault tolerance, uh, many of these requirements are actually levied on us anyway by virtue of the fact that we're going to space station. We have to approach station that has people on board. We have to berth with station, the crew has to enter Dragon. So many of the human rating requirements like uh, touch temperatures, pinch points, sharp edges, air circulation and composition, temperature control, are all levied on us anyway. Um, so um, again, wherever there's a design decision that, has, that can't easily be retrofitted to human rating, we go with human rating. Uh, first flight will be the second flight of the Falcon 9. It will, all going well on the first flight of Falcon 9, it will follow the, f the inaugural flight by two months, placing it in January of next year. Uh, there are two more demonstrations, so three total under the COTS program. The third one actually goes to station and berths with station. Uh, that's uh, baseline in August of next year. Uh, and we are fabricating the flight unit. Uh, that's a qual unit that you're looking at there. The, actually, the bottom is a proto-flight. 
the top, the nose cone, is a protoflight, and the pressure vessel in the middle is a qualification unit. So just a very quick overview of the spacecraft.